Okay. First thing that we need to talk about is that wave numbers are proportional to energy. The higher the wave number, the higher the energy. Okay. And when we're talking about IR, remember that we're talking about basically stretching like a spring, right? So the stronger this spring is, the, the, the higher the frequency, the uh, stretching of it will be, and the higher energy that will be. So uh, this is also proportional to frequency. So strong springs, strong tight springs have higher energy or wave number or frequency than weak, loose springs. Okay, so that's that's what we're kind of basing this on when we compare the stretching frequency of acetone to acetamide. Right, it's like saying that this string, ripped, not string, spring, is stronger or tighter than this spring, or this bond takes more energy to stretch than this bond takes more uh, less energy to stretch. So why is that? Well, uh, we can answer this question by looking at resonance structures. Recall that there's a lone pair on this nitrogen. And so one possible resonance structure for acetamide is that this lone pair donates right here and this lone pair uh, bond swings up onto oxygen to give us this structure, right? So that's a resonance structure. There is a resonance structure uh, for regular old acetone as well. So we can uh, mention that. And it would be the following. negative charge on oxygen, positive charge on carbon. But then consider that acetamide can do the same thing, right? If we wanted, we could draw a resonance structure which the nitrogen lone pair doesn't donate, or rather, I think a, a different way I could show this would be uh, drawing a third resonance structure from here in which the double bond just goes on to nitrogen. And we get something that looks like the acetone uh, resonance structure where we have neutral nitrogen and H2, but a positive charge in the carbon, right? So we can conceptually say, hey, we have three resonance structures for acetamide, right? Which, because they all center around this double bond and where these electrons are going, right? Or uh, depend on these, uh, this uh, lone pair being delocalized. In a way, uh, these three atoms are all basically conjugated, right? It's a conjugated system. And so a way that we can consider uh, when we look at just acetamide in general, instead of drawing it with resonance structures, we could draw it as follows. It's like we have a partial double bond to the nitrogen and to the oxygen at all times, because all resonance structures that we've drawn above basically represent the fact that the double bond is uh, alternately between the carbon and the oxygen or between the carbon and the nitrogen. So this double bond, when we just draw acetamide like this, is actually delocalized over this bond here, which tells me that this bond between the carbonyl and the oxygen isn't as strong as it is in acetone because it can be delocalized to the nitrogen to some extent. So this bond is weaker. Weaker bonds, that's like a weaker spring. Therefore, we would expect a lower energy vibration, lower frequency, and therefore a lower wave number. Weaker double bond because it's delocalized. And weaker double bond means lower energy, low energy, low wave number. 